be at the top at both of those, essentially. Like, it's... it's oh, 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 oh. Another farting Dan Orlovsky oh, situation. No, Dan. Dan, Danny Dumps. You just farted in a... Danny Dumps. What do you mean? It's... it's it's unbelievable. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Yeah, but your butt, your butt was just talking. We heard it. We're your butt just farted into the phone again like you and Monday Night Football. Oh, no. That's what just happened. What do you mean? Oh, oh, man. Man. You remember Monday Night Football man. when you had your microphone and you went to sneeze and you bent down yeah, and it you caught your fart. Said. Like, what do you, no, what do you, no. what do you, your asshole just farted. You your pants, Fart. We heard you fart, brother. We heard you fart. We heard you fart, brother. Yeah. We heard your butt just fart. In the middle of the tank, I right? did not fart. Oh, oh man. Man. Dan, Dan. This is two times out, Dan. This is the Orlovsky thing. Fool me once, Dan. Are you guys being serious right now or are you messing with me? Dan. 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 We have the capabilities of this. I would like to let the option. Mmm. That, that that kills me every time. That kills me every time. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Monday. Uh, it's going to be a crazy Monday here because... We have the uh, solar eclipse. Now, here where I am, it's going to be 87% coverage of it. And I, I may try something. I have actually the eclipse glasses. Don't go out looking at the sun. One of our um, uh, channel members had mentioned that um, he actually had a burned retina uh, from actually looking at the sun. And he said, you don't want this. Trust me, you don't want this. So don't look at the sun without the uh, approved glasses i actually got some from amazon i got a five pack for like 26 dollars and when you put them on you can't see anything i'm like literally looking out the window and it's just like it's dark so these are made so you can look at the sun and i think what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to modify one pair of them and put them over one of my cameras and see if we can actually record this um, as it happens here i think 318 east time is going to be the peak here the further north you go from me uh the more totality but I'm, I'm not trying to drive to like erie pennsylvania today or to ohio today but we will be driving through those areas in a little over two and a half weeks of my man game time brian david wiley and of course hopping on that big old jet air liner will be game time, uh, I'm sorry, primetime Phil, who saw Deuce Vaughn yesterday there in Florida. So shout out to him. I hope he told him to run, Forrest, run. So here we are with the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm going to say that the Dallas Cowboys need to correct one of their biggest mistakes. And see, here's the thing. The Cowboys um, are, are having to put a whole lot of stock into this uh draft because rightly or wrongly the cowboys have not dug deep into free agency they have not okay we have been killing them year after year after year for not doing anything but somehow they haven't they've never have been big in free agency the biggest free agent signing you could say would be brandon carr that's it in the last 15 years um and before that it would have to be to so they look at it and say we are so good at finding guys that are on our roster that we'll coach them up and then the next year plug them in and give us the talent that we need homegrown versus going out and getting somebody else's player that may be older and you may agree or disagree with that, but that's the way they're going to do it, and they're not going to change. But the thing that they have to do is, again, their first-round draft picks, when you start going down the list of first-round players that they've picked and thinking about how good they have been in drafting offensive linemen in the first round, that you say, yeah, they're really good. The problem for the Cowboys, for the most part, has been the second round. Their philosophy is always, okay, we want to get the best um, 
prospect, you know, the, the highest rated prospect at a position when we draft. It doesn't matter if we're drafting 2nd, 10th, 15th, 30th. We want the number one player at a position. And that philosophy has actually worked pretty good for him for the most part. We'll have to wait and see about Mozzie, but I, I've got more on Mozzie later on. I don't think Mozzie is as bad as you everybody thinks. <clears throat> and I actually now see the light on why they didn't bring back Hankins. Be that as it may, <clears throat> when they get to the second round pick, they feel kind of greedy that they want to get a, another guy who has first round talent that for whatever reason is in the second round. When you think about, say, Randy Gregory, Randy Gregory, of course, having smoked weed at the combine, it failed the test, which put him into the substance abuse protocol where he's getting tested weekly. The crazy thing about this is, is um, Randy Gregory probably didn't smoke any more weed than any other player. It's just he was tested every week. Yeah. As Chris Long put out, you know, after, of course, he left football before they changed the rules, that they knew come April 20th they're getting, you know, tested for weed. You stop smoking a month before the test, you take the test, you pass it, you go back to smoking weed. Common knowledge in the NFL. Once you get tested and you're good and you've been clean, you only get tested the following year. Randy Gregory didn't have that opportunity because he failed at the combine every single week. So him getting busted once or twice a year is like, okay, he was only smoking a couple of times in a year, which is probably far less than others. But be that as it may, it was a stupid move. And the Cowboys looked at it and said, well, this is a guy who should, you know, his talent has put him in the first round. Didn't work. Jalen Smith, who before the catastrophic knee injury, should have been a top 10 pick. Just did. But not only did this knee injury affect his knee, he had nerve damage that went down to the foot and his ankle and had drop foot. And this is so bad that he had to wear a brace that's basically like a spring that would pull his foot back forward. And so you are drafting a guy who has had injury issues. And let's just take a look for a second here. Sean Lee, in 2010, had knee issues. Sean Lee, actually, for, for the most part, in comparison to most of the second-round players that we've drafted, had a good career. But you wonder, had he not had the knee injury, which, you know, finally, three years in, he had knee surgery, and they said that a lot of the damage in it was what he'd carried through the NFL. And his career was shortened. And that's a guy who had all the mentality, desire that you want. But unfortunately, the body failed him. After Sean Lee, we got Bruce Carter. That didn't work out. Gavin Escobar, who actually had a decent career in Miami, but didn't help us much. One of the few bright spots, Demarcus Lawrence. But three years in, people thought that, okay, we are screwed. Um... He's not going to be the guy um, because he had his third year, one sack, a PD suspension, and back issues, which is the reason we drafted Randy Gregory the next year and Taco Charlton because we thought, hmm, we're not going to have somebody who's going to be able to rush the passer. We don't have anybody. And fortunately, he came around and played really well. Um, then we got Jalen Smith, who we talked about, dropped foot. We got a woozy in uh, 2017. Never quite, uh, he wasn't a bad player, but never became an elite player. Connor Williams was actually a solid offensive lineman, became a great center in Miami. But again, he's one of the, the better ones. Tristan Hill. Now, this one was one of those ones that was a head scratcher because Tristan Hill wasn't starting in Florida because he had issues with the coaches there for disciplinary actions. 
and had to basically sign, he had to sign basically a thing saying that I will show up to meetings and practice. And then they tried to sell it to us of, oh, we have everybody sign that. Okay, so that was completely a bust. Diggs, another one of the great ones that we've actually done. Um, there weren't any off the field issues or injuries going into that draft. Then we got Boss Man Fat. Um, the jury's out on Sam Williams and on Luke Schoonmaker. So here's the thing. Schoonmaker actually came in, um, and had foot issues. I believe it was, and he's had shoulder surgery, uh, this off season with his foot being damaged. He couldn't do the OTAs and he was limited in training camp. And basically his first year ended up being not what you expect for your second round pick. The Cowboys can ill afford having a second-round pick this year that is not going to be the guy. Now, looking at the draft, ideally for the Cowboys, since they usually are really, really good at offensive linemen and knowing that we need one, you've got to figure that they're going to be looking to get the best prospect that they can. Um, You would figure left tackles, you're not going to get the top prospect. At 24. Garden center, on the other hand, you have a really good chance of getting, definitely center, the best prospect. And guard, you might, depending on how the quarterback run is, and it may be that it's running pretty heavy, um, that you may end up having run on quarterbacks and then the tackles and, of course, the defensive uh, edge rushers and stuff. And you might end up being able to get the best rated guard or hybrid as you know, or position flex player who can play guard, tackle, or center, and plug him in. The second round is going to be key because we need a guy outside the box that's going to be able to do something. And one of the 30-day visits, linebackers, and make no mistake about it, um, running backs, offensive linemen, and uh, linebackers, I believe they've brought in 24 for 30-day visits, or the 30 visits, 24 of those positions. They've only brought in a couple of cornerbacks, a couple of wide receivers, a couple of tight ends, no quarterbacks. So there's that. So Junior Colston is one of the ones that they've brought in. And California highlights, I'm going to just play this uh, in the background here while I am doing my thing. Um, let's flip the camera here. He is from Michigan, and he is a true run-stopping linebacker. He's six foot two, 238 pounds, and uh, numbers-wise, he only has a half a sack, two pass breakups, and so on. But he is a guy who can get there when you need him to stop the run. And if you can add a guy like him to the mix, your linebacking core is far and away better than what you started with last year. Um, unfortunately, we had promise. We had a lot of hope because we looked at it and saying, you know, Leighton Van Der Esch, is a good linebacker when healthy, but unfortunately only played, uh, I believe, five games. And we looked at Overshone being actually a steal in the draft, and we saw a lot of promise for him uh, during training camp. Unfortunately, he tore his ACL. The good news is we've seen workout videos. um, We've seen workout videos of him uh, right now where he's running cones corner to corner to corner. Uh, planting and going and moving, still looking really, really fast without any, uh, doesn't look like there's any skip in his hip or he he looks good. Okay. And so if he is able to come in, it's still basically like his rookie year because he hasn't played a season. So he's still going to be green behind the ears, but having a guy like Eric Kendricks, who I'd feel is you know, even at this age, it's better than Leighton Van Der Esch. Hell, if you can play 16, 17 games, you already got more than what you got from Leighton Van Der Esch. If you can add a run-stopping linebacker like Colson in the second round and get yourself a starting offensive lineman, and then in the third round, you're looking at the best running back available, 
this team is all of a sudden a whole lot better than what you think. And I dare say, I dare say that they could actually be better than what they were last year. I know that's kind of crazy for most people because we've killed the Cowboys and things. But taking my emotions out of it and at least looking at the concepts that the Cowboys have and thinking about how they have gone through where we've gone through and said, we need to sign this player. You know, we, we people said, you know, we should be signing Odell Beckham Jr., but they made the move for Brandon Cooks, who actually had a more effective year. People said we were crazy for letting go Randy Gregory. And Dorm Armstrong played better than Randy Gregory for two years. So if that ends up being the case and that ends up being true, the Cowboys feel that they have some guys on the roster that need the opportunity to play that are younger and cheaper and will allow them to do other things. And that is a possibility. I'm not going to say that it's not. But if they can get the draft right where we do, and for me, a good draft is I get an immediate starter that's an impact player. I get a second starter out of the draft. I get some depth, and I get a special team standout. If you get those four things right there in a draft, you've had a great draft, and we need a great draft, and we need to make sure we don't screw up on the second round. Now, now here's one of the things that's, that's still funny because, you know, we've heard so many people who have talked about the Cowboys having the need to blow it up. And I'm going to say that, you know, there are no new ideas. There are no new ideas. And let's follow in on that whole idea. The standings as of right now, the 4-7 and seven Washington football team finding itself atop the division. The Eagles, of course, sitting there with that tie, so they have a chance. FPI still sees Philly as the favorite to win the division based on the tie. Should point out the Eagles have a tough game Monday night against Seattle, while the Giants play Cincinnati, which figures to be reeling coming off of losing Joe Burrow. So let's just, as we come out and sort of think about this for a moment, here's the way I view that division, and I want to see if you guys see it the same way. Bart Scott, I'll start with you. The two teams we expected to be good this year and expected to be battling it out for the division this year, Dallas and Philly, are both kind of payroll bloated messes, while the Giants and Washington both have some nice young pieces to build on. You watch Washington yesterday. The running back is a rookie. The wide receiver is a second-year player. They got a ton of studs on that defensive line. They have a coach people really like in his first year. Giants have a lot of things going for them as well, and Daniel Jones is playing better. The way I look at that division, the Giants in Washington feel like the two teams on the come, and Dallas and Philly look like two th two teams that need to hit that plunger and Boy, just he was so right. start over. Bart Scott, what do you think? I mean, I think you hit the, the nail right on the head, Greeny. When you think about you know Philadelphia and you think about Dallas, these are teams that have been in their winning cycle for for a while. Now they have a quarterback in which they have to pay big money. You think about you know the the uh, Washington football team. You think about the Giants. They have young quarterbacks, and now they have assets, and they have a ton of cap space. You talk about the Philadelphia Eagles next year being $64 million over the cap. Dallas has a huge decision to make if they're going to pay uh, Dak Prescott $39 million. You have an agent, Tyron Smith, that's eating a lot of the cap up. I think if, you, if you're in Washington or if you're in, in, in New York, I think you feel good about your chances, especially if Alex Smith comes off the books next year. They'll be able to you know address the quarterback position but have a ton of cap space to maybe invite some talent to that division into that football team yeah and they have a coach okay. that everybody likes and wants to play for it mark you've been on our show for so long now talking about i know you love dak prescott we love Dak prescott and if anything else dak prescott's value i think has increased mm -hmm. since he got hurt and we've seen what's become of them but he is going to be a 39 million dollar player mm -hmm. next year if he plays on the franchise tag and i just ran through the numbers zeke elliott's getting paid a fortune amari cooper guys on that defense do you think the cowboys need to blow it up and maybe that includes not bringing dak back well, I don't, I don't know if that's that's the move. you got to bring Dak back. Like you said, his his uh, stock just went way up because you see this team is completely lost without him, and it's going to take too much time to develop a young rookie with a team that needs to win now, that's built to win now when they've paid all these guys to be there for this amount of time. And, God, they still have a guy wide open on this freaking punt, <laughs> on this fake punt. That makes me so mad. But it's all right. Uh, yeah, I, I think you got to get uh, Dak back. 
figure that out, but some of these other players that you paid big money to might need to get released, and you might have to eat some of that contract money. But uh, right now in that division, the stability uh, meter is Ron Rivera and Alex Smith. Those guys have the experience. They're ready to win. They've seen it. They've done it. And that's what's going to win down the stretch. I think that's right. And, and, and Rob Nikovich, I mean, Sanchez said it exactly right. The Cowboys and Eagles are teams yeah. that were built to win right now. And they are a combined, I'm doing this in my head, they have a combined six wins and one tie. And however many losses that adds up to, 13, I think it is. So what does that say? If, if you're in that situation and you're a win-now team, where are you, Rob Nikovich? <laughs> well, they both both those teams made mistakes with who they paid. You look at the Eagles, they guaranteed 107 million to Carson Wentz, and right now he looks like he's not the guy for them moving forward. He's he's not performing to the level of his contract. And then you look at the Cowboys and what they paid Zeke in they paid a running back top dollar in a passing league. And everyone could say, "Yeah, well they were running the ball and they had a great offensive line, but Look around the league, there's a reason why other teams have decided let's spend our money elsewhere rather than the running back position. This year, yeah. Zeke leads the NFL in fumbles. Doesn't seem to have the same burst. So you look at Washington, they're a young team on defense. They look promising to me. I think that they could they could definitely win the division this year. Maybe, maybe even sneak up on somebody in the playoffs because when you have a quarterback like Alex Smith who can make the right decisions, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And they will get a home playoff game, assuming they're the ones who win that division. And just one quick final thought on mismanagement. You, you pay all that money to Zeke Elliott, which you didn't have to do, but you decide to do it. And then you go out and hire a coach. The book on him is they don't run the football. Mike McCarthy's teams never ran the ball in Green Bay. So none of it really seems to make sense. The problems seem to begin at the top. The more things change, the more things stay the same. So that was 2020 during the season where they said, the Eagles and the Cowboys, they need to blow it up and start all over. And be in a position like the Giants with the nice young new coach and young quarterback. Be like Washington. <clears throat> Teams that are up on the rise. So before we get all bent out of shape out of people's ideas and concepts here, um, let's be real here. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. Nobody. Okay? Nobody. And that's all I have to say about this. And as always, you know what? I appreciate each and every one of you guys, as well as you ladies, for being here and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. We're going to see what we can do with the solar eclipse. Um, we're going to be trying that out. And um, we will be here live streaming 9 o'clock tonight. As always, I appreciate you guys. Peace out.